Hello everyone, Jasmine O'Reilly here with the Leveling Up Vodcast, where I get the pleasure of talking to awesome business owners and project professionals about their experience in the field. And we've got Jake Vanderol here from Widelands, which is a Salesforce consultancy company based in Brisbane. And a little bit of a different flavor on the vodcast today, because if you tune in regularly, you'll see that I do talk to people who are really into the nitty gritty of project management and PMOs. But Jake's coming in with a different perspective today, because what you do, and Jake, you can tell us more in a moment, but essentially software development and all that backend stuff in the, you know, the sphere of Salesforce, but you guys are agile and DevOps bread and butter. So I want to hear all about it and how you do things and how you approach delivering projects for clients and juggling multiple clients, but enough from me, tell us a little bit about Widelands. What do you guys do? Well, we work with a Salesforce platform to bring efficiency and visibility to companies end-to-end processes and it's something that a lot of people are lacking these days and are on the search for whether it's people who are doing marketing campaigns capturing all their funnel and they need somewhere to go and see how it's performing and converting right through to modeling in-depth financial service delivery processes in the platform we've been doing it for 10 years and started out doing a bit of an industry leading project. We started out with a project to consolidate seven retail fund managers worth of superannuation data onto the Salesforce platform back in 2013. And there was not too many people doing that back then. So in Australia anyway, and it was a really challenging data set to to, to work with and, and, and manage. So it's been an interesting journey growing from the front office cliche story to nearly 10 staff. Uh, nice. across that 10 year timeline so uh, yeah I love that and so I always wonder you know digital transformation obviously happening left right and center throughout Australia and the globe but there's a lot of these amazing off-the-shelf products whether it be Microsoft 365 or Dynamics Salesforce is another one you name it you can buy it off the shelf but a lot of the times the off-the-shelf solution has to be configured and who on earth do you speak to so if you're watching this and you're in financial services and you're thinking Salesforce is our future, companies like Wildlands are your people. They will get it done for you. And would it be fair to say, Jake, you don't just do it once. You've got a lot of your clients where they'll they'll make changes and customizations to their Salesforce instance and you, you know, it's like little mini projects all the time for your client. The off the shelf term is is actually quite a funny one. It's something I spend a lot of time talking about in these meetings where when you buy these platforms, you're actually buying a toolbox and you're building yourself a foundation to, to build your company on and you're becoming a software developer and growing out your platform. And I think a lot of people come in with the misnomer that, that these, these big name cloud platforms are something that you can just run with off the shelf. And I think they're, they get a bit of a shock generally because it, it's a new a new way of working. I think it's only really changed in the last five years, but in the olden days, you used to buy a piece of software and it had a process in it and you made your business follow that process. But now the sky's the limit. You can literally build anything that you want in these platforms. And that's that's the journey that we take people on and we partner with them. And even in the Salesforce ecosystem, we're a bit of a different partner because we have clients that we've worked with continuously for five, six years to grow and evolve the platforms in line with the way that their businesses are growing. That's really cool. I love that. Put that on your website. That's really cool. Um, <laughs> Something on my website. It's on your website. <laughs> <laughs> the builder's house is never done. It's a good it's a good segue then because I'd love to hear from you. And it might not be a single project, which is what I often ask interviewees on the podcast about, but is it, you know, a portfolio of work or a particular client? Obviously you may not want to name names, but has there been a Salesforce portfolio of work that Wildlands have done that's really memorable to you? I think and uh, we were discussing this before internally that <laughs> the successful ones are less memorable generally. Like they get great outcomes for the client and they're always happy, but we always remember the ones that are challenging that needed the extra mile to get them right. And I think, you know, 
with the way that we work and you alluded to it before we do lots of smaller projects a lot of iterative changes so we have a lot going on multiple stakeholders multiple requirements and multiple salesforce orgs that we're working on continually at the same time and it's something we have to be very clear when we interview people that they can survive in this environment because it can it can take a certain type of personality to be able to take all the different pressures and the things that are pulling you in all different directions to work there. Some people just like working for an end user and they get one lot of stakeholders and they get the same requirements coming through and they do their tickets and that's it. But that's not what this consulting environment's about. In terms of memorable, I think you wanted me to expand on that. So I think it's, it's all about the never ending pursuit of project delivery perfection, right? Like every time you come out of it, you're like, Oh, I can't believe I did this wrong again. I just want to, I want to change it. I want to make sure that we tweak a process or make sure our QA is better, or I need to be more involved sooner at this part, just to make sure that the end to end delivery and the outcome of the product is, is what I pitched to the client at the start, because in a business this size, I'm pre-sales. I'm the solution architect. I'm the guy responsible for making sure it does what it said. At You're the, a business owner. At the end. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that bit is really close, close to my heart. And I, yeah, I think, you know, even particularly in the last two years, the way that we've delivered projects has really been a direct response to what we're seeing coming out of these projects and what our clients are giving us as feedback. Like we've, gotten to that spot where we can start to compartmentalize jobs, which is a really big thing for a small business where we've got a tester, we've got a scrum master, we've got people doing projects specifically, and that all leads to a delivery and a better client experience. So I'm not sure whether that really answers your question, but I feel it encompasses the, the vibe. (laughs) <laughs> yes, definitely. And I do want to, I guess, explore that a little bit further, Jake, because I will hand on heart say, obviously, you you know, the work that we do at Level Up and I've worked in lots of organizations and Agile and you know, Scrum, it's, it's, it's trendy at the moment, but most companies actually do that in more of a hybrid way. Wide lands though, because you are more on that traditional, you know, DevOps sort of side of project delivery, you guys do it. You live it and breathe it. You know, Jira is your absolute baby. And I've I've never seen a Jira quite like the Wide Lens one. It's terrifying and impressive at the same time. It's already changed. It's completely (laughs) different already. Uh, But I'd love to talk to you about how do you do things in such an agile fashion? Because even though we talked about, you know, sometimes the scope of what you do is quite small, your team are very nimble. And you kind of touched on it before about having compartmentalized, you know, almost like that conveyor belt process. So how how do you and the team sort of tackle projects? What is your set process and what tools do you use? I think I think we should preface it with it. Some people might regard it as poorly or cowboy, <laughs> cowboy delivery. But I think when you've got so many different competing priorities it's it's something that's very hard to put into a standard box Mm. and when you're delivering software with releases for one platform which is what this stuff's built for you know sprints and and uh, being able to just you know plan your boards out and put all these roadmaps in and and just flow through the work is is a much easier prospect and i think the other thing that i say is that i i'm only ever trying to do best practice because I think if you can actually achieve best agile practice, you're a long way in front of what a lot of organizations are doing because from what I've seen, there's so many people out there that can hand on heart say they do really good agile. We have the added, um, (laughs) yeah, we, we have the added complexity of a, of a support ticket system as well. We use Jira service management and you can't put support tickets in sprints and generally they've got, shorter turnaround times again so we need to split our day and our resources between those competing priorities so we're using layers on layers where we've got a a, a, the tempo platform that a suite of apps that do time tracking planning and cost tracking that sit on top of our jira everything's cost tracked and time sheeted and it's always a, a discussion in the business at what level we track time at right down to the subtask, the story, the epic. We've tried all the different ones and now we're coming back to the subtask again just so we can use more of that standard Jira 
functionality to see how our subtasks are progressing, see the roll up time against the average because budget management is really hard when you have fast, fast paced, short projects with very tight budgets. We do a lot of fixed price project implementations, which again is, is a challenging thing to stay across. Uh, you can you can blow budgets within a day if you've got two people on it you've got a seven hour budget for a ticket and you easily commit 14 hours to it mm -hmm. but uh, i think you know uh, are we allowed to say that you've worked with us too and i think you've imparted a lot of good practice in terms of helping us build our project status board which shows our project portfolio labeling rag statuses and and those you know key PM principles. We've actually recently found an even better way to do it that nice. using a plugin called JXL, which brings spreadsheets into Jira. And you can not only have all your projects at the Epic level, because we run everything in one project, because it got too hard. There was too many things, too many fields to manage. In multiple projects, we just have one wideland scheduled work project. All the all the projects for the clients are Epics. Mm -hmm. And then we have our JXL PSB project status board that we call it and you can actually drill down now and see the subtasks and the stories that are incomplete and it's just a constant refinement process which probably makes some people cringe we do take a breath in between changing it but where we see Very there's a problem I can, I can say that. <laughs> when we see there's a problem with the workflows or something that that will roadblock us we don't hesitate to make a change get the team on board we meet every day do we all agree that this is a good change and go and implement it? And I think, you know, we had a really good example of that where we've only had our scrum master who started with us at the start of the year and we we're trying to put together sprints and we had an, an issue where we had our story status is not quite right to the point that we had each of the stories going through the testing phases and ending up with a deployment status and then a done and that meant that we couldn't complete sprints because you could never finish a story until the project was finished. So that was a really big change that we put in just in the last couple of weeks. And the Jira, the Jira leader probably hearing that and cringing, but you know, another thing was the way that we implemented Jira was probably not the, the best project that, <laughs> that we've run. And, and, you know, I think it's really important to follow proper process even when you're doing things internally because we're system consultants we should have run ourselves through a proper process and scope the requirements but you know trying to keep up with the competing presses and and imminent needs of of leaving base camp we we put it in and and sucked it up and and have worked through it and refined it as a product internally well, you've said three really great there. things, which I think are lessons for anyone watching watching this video already. You're full of wisdom, Jake. Um, but the, the first I'm year, I'm getting really old. <laughs> Stop it. The first thing that you said, which I think is a really big lesson for a lot of people, is you've got, I'm going to call it your source of truth data center, which is Jira, and you use plugins, you know, to make Jira your, your single source of truth. Everyone watching this is going, oh my God, we still use Excel and we still use all these other things. And no, I think I you're really it. good at that too. The integration, even in, into Teams, into Confluence, like you, you're the king of plugins and I think it's awesome. So to have the single source of truth is an absolute win. The second thing that you said, which I love, is the continuous improvement mindset. And it's almost like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounded like you were saying at the end of every project, no matter how small they are, you reflect back and go, well, how can we improve this process? How can we make this more efficient? You know, do I need to just scope these when I'm doing this again because it took more time or it didn't? I think it's easy to not have that mindset. So that was mm. great. I think it's, I think it's harder to... <laughs> I think it's hard to pull the rest of the team into it though. It's easy to sit up at the top and say, hey, we should have yeah. done this better and, and yeah. dictate it down. But I think I think it's a big thing to get the team involved in that. So you can build a culture around positive feedback and change because I think that's probably, again, yeah. a place that we're lacking right now yeah, if, I'm, nice. if I'm up front. And, it, and I think it's a, it's a really important thing with distributed teams. We have teams in the Philippines. We've got two different teams in the Philippines, plus mm -hmm. everyone here in the office. So it's it's about getting buy-in and, and making sure that everyone feels that they've got input to the process. And I think we do have that, but it's nice to formalize it. And, and on the first point, I just want to say that I 
I try not to go too hardcore with the plugins. I'm all about out of box functionality <laughs> and trying to make it do yes. what it can within within the ecosystem. So Jira is yeah. a really good example of Confluence, Jira service management. We try mm -hmm. and focus on one platform and get everything out of that we are salesforce users too as a certified partner we've run all our sales yes <laughs> our sales course, deals yes. through salesforce yeah but that everyone's... integrates in your jira it's amazing it does and that uses a plugin but <laughs> but yeah i think it's really important to try and pick a platform and get as much out of it as it, as it can and i think even oh. some Sometimes it might cost a little bit more to do it. And I think this is a bit of a Salesforce mindset too. It might cost a little bit more to put it all on the Salesforce platform. But doing that, it saves integrating. It saves a lot of yeah. add-on plug-in expenses, which do add up. And I, I talk to a lot of customers because I think one thing we haven't really mentioned yet is a large part of my role is being a business analyst to small business because we play a lot in the SMB sector. And these people are always coming from five different platforms. They're using Monday. They're using Process Street, a time tracking platform. They're using Excel, email, all these things. And what we do is bring it back and put it into the one system. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's really important. And yeah, that's the, not the just a small, medium business thing either, Jake. <laughs> Every organization everywhere, period, is doing that. Mm. I think it's, it's a really important thing. But I think the next step is communication platforms because people are just a victim of mm. of having a million different places to go and look for things like how often do you go oh did you send that to me in email or did you send it yes. to me in teams or slack or yes. whatsapp or how can a I million find different quickly? things yeah. and a really interesting thing was that email was never invented to be this edm marketing delivery tool with pictures and all this stuff it was a plain text messaging system yeah. which which the world's coming full circle back and we're implementing these plain text messaging systems back through things like slack and teams and yeah. you know i i had a really interesting thing when we had some staff leave to go into their email accounts and see that they just didn't use them because all the communication was in jira if you talked about a project or a ticket it was in jira Great. And at worst case, it was in Teams. And I think that everyone should wage a war on email and get rid of it and make sure that all their communications are in that same platform. That's cool. the technology's there to do it now. And I've got, a, I've got a good use case for that one too. I was worried before that I didn't have a, a positive use case story, but I've got one here. We've got a international relocations company. So they relocate people from the UK to Australia. Ooh. And they do all their communication via Slack. They, they create a Slack channel whenever they do a relocation so they can, you know, time zones are always a thing between the two countries mm -hmm. that you've got that continuous conversation feed. And one thing that I'm trying to do is talk them into integrating their Slack into their Salesforce instance. So when they create a new relocation project, it automatically spins up Slack channel, all the comms are in there and they sync back into, into their Salesforce platform and, and, yeah, it just it just removes the slow, arduous emailing and replies. It's all there. It's contextual, and you can see it as a communication mm. trail. Yeah. Cool. Well, just have to spin up that campaign. I'm sure other people have done it. But end end email. Um, I like that. The other thing I was going to mention is that the third thing I heard from what you said before, which I really like, is you you sort of busted a bit of a myth that to to be agile means you don't have process. And I know that this is a person that you and I talk about a lot, Jake. Um, but process and being really clear on roles and responsibilities, as much as it's painful and it feels compliance driven, it actually helps you be quick to know who's doing what, what is the process so that you can move through in an agile fashion, so to speak. So mm. I found that really encouraging because I think a lot of people, especially when they are in this hybrid type delivery environment, get really caught up on that, that oh, to be agile means I can't have process where well, you absolutely can. You um, have to. I, yeah. I think it, it, I don't know where that comes from because I think that any business that wants to deliver quickly needs good process and yeah. I don't see the two things being related like you need the processes to underline it you need to have people clear on their roles and responsibilities more so than ever yeah. and I, I find that a, an interesting thing that people people follow I feel that you know ever since I became a real business that 
process development has been such a such a key thing that you try and impart and thanks to you for implementing our first racy that we really use as a cornerstone document and just a mindset more than anything that even if it's not in the racy we need to have accountability on yeah. everything that we do yeah and clarity exactly. and that goes into jira like that was mm -hmm. It's such an important thing that, that, that you have clarity to what you're doing, irrespective of whether it's process management, project yeah. management, yeah. development, like the biggest issues that we have in our organization are through lack of clarity with mm -hmm. clients, with staff, with yeah. invoices. I mean, every, every part, your marriage, <laughs> you need clarity and good communication. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now we're almost at the end of our episode, but I would love to hear from you your top three tips for effective project delivery or any. So I ruined it. I ruined it because my number one is clarity at all levels. <laughs> I just did it. I've got my notes off to the side there. Clarity of requirements, <laughs> clarity of development <laughs> tasks, and clarity of technical outcomes. Clarity, like clarity, clarity. Love three that. C's. I've I've done uh -huh. a thing. It's just it's everything because yeah of all the reasons we just said. I think I think the other thing is don't wait to get involved if you know something's not right. I, I think I see a lot that people will sit back and go, I'll just wait and see if this fixes itself or if people come to come to their own conclusion to fix mm -hmm. it. And they don't generally because yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get to the point of you going, I think there's something wrong without it being wrong. And the, and the other thing is I think people sometimes particularly you know team members are just like they just want you to help them get the answer sometime like don't put everyone through the ringer every time to try and yeah. figure it out themselves sometimes just a bit of guidance is a good enough lesson for them to pick it up next time and the third one was follow a good process so <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> we've really we've really killed my top three well maybe no, maybe we nailed it. it we talked about them all, we, all yeah we nailed it in detail we should edit this Love to be it. the other way around so you can yeah. start with the top three and then we'll just go into great detail on the three <laughs> on the three uh, three topics but i think you know my key my key mantra that i've carried along for a long time now and and tried to relay to my stuff is spending 10 minutes at the start of a project will always save you an hour at the end. Spend that 10 minutes extra to get the clarity, to make sure that everyone knows what they're doing and, and be clear on the requirements. Spend the extra 10 minutes because it, it, testing as well. Got to test everything. Spend the time testing. Otherwise, you're going to get it back from the client and it's going to have things that you could have saved up front. And it's just all that it does is mean there's a less good experience and you spend more time doing it. So. Yeah, love that. Spend the time. That'll be our catchphrase from this episode. Thank you so much, Jake, for your thoughts and sharing us with sharing with us, I should say, a little bit about what you do and, and how it works and how we can all be more agile and have a continuous improvement mindset. I do appreciate that. Before we wrap the episode, do you want to give us a little plug of how we can find Wildlands? Well, Dan wildlands.com.au don't judge our website it's it's one of those things that's in the pipeline but <laughs> they deliver about... great work for salesforce particularly if you're in financial services i'm i'm a bit old school i like to get on the phone and just have a conversation and and talk through people's pain points and and, and exploring how we can help solve them with technology because there's a lot of great technology out there so no yeah. matter how big or small pick up the phone and see if we can if we can add some efficiency and clarity to your business. I love that. Thanks again, Jake. And thank you for tuning in to the Leveling Up podcast. We will see you next time with a new guest.